Hey guys, welcome back to Kellen Coin, and I am back from Italy. Well, actually, a little while ago. This video is a little bit late, so I apologize for that. But anyways, yes, after 21 days there, I am finally back from Italy. This video is, as you can see from the title, part one. I split the video into two parts because just one video would be too long and I'd lose your attention. In addition, the time I spent in Italy naturally split into two parts anyways. However, there is something I must mention. I took very few pictures and videos there, even though I went to a lot of fabulous places. This is because of a couple reasons. One, I try not to act like a stereotypical American tourist as much as possible. Two, I prefer to enjoy the experience rather than spending the time there trying to get a good photo. And three, if you really want to see the things I saw, then I suggest going uh, and saving up and seeing them yourself. And before we begin, I would like to mention that all these videos will have a lot of links in the description to all sorts of things. So please, please, please be sure to check it out. Now let's get started. First, we need some background, namely why I went to Italy in the first place. The actual reason I went to Italy was because I'm in a choir. I was in school choir from 3rd to 5th grade, but this year was the first year I chose not to do school choir and instead do an outside choir, or like an independent choir. I auditioned and I made it into the boys' choir for 3rd to 6th grade. However, in January, I was promoted to Bel Canto, the middle school and early high school choir. This choir, in addition to the regular high school choir, was touring northern Italy from July 6th to 16th, and that was how I started my Italy trip. So part one will be about my choir trip. Let's begin. I left from the local airport with my choir on July 6th, and we arrived on July 7th at the London airport for our connection. We then took our connection and landed in the Bologna airport. We then took our coach uh, bus to Vicenza and checked into our hotel. I roomed with the other two boys in Bel Canto. The next day, we went to Verona and had a tour, and at the end of the day, performed a concert in Villa Caldonio. While in Verona, we saw many cool things. What stood out to me the most was uh, seeing both Romeo and Juliet's house. The next day, we took the bus to Venice and had another guided tour. We went to many places throughout the city, including, including Doge's Palace and St. Mark's Basilica. Later in the day, we went to Mass in Basilica Santa Maria Gloriosa dei Frari. We sang different songs throughout the Mass. Please note, my choir is not religious, but since we were in Italy, a very Catholic country, our choir decided to observe some religious ceremonies. We also sang mostly religious pieces in addition to American spirituals, but we also sang some non-religious pieces. The reason for mostly religious pieces was the fact that we mostly sang in churches, and so even if we were not doing it as a mass, it would have not been very appropriate. Anyways, moving on. The next day, July 10th, we left our hotel and headed for the next one in Monte Contini Therme. Terme. Terme? Therme? I don't know. Uh, along the way, we stopped in Pisa and saw the Leaning Tower of Pisa. By the time we arrived in Monte Catini Terme, I'm going to go with that. It was late afternoon, so some of the choir, including me, went swimming in the, at the local swimming pool. And that ended the day. The next day, we headed to Florence and had a guided tour. Unfortunately, the academia was closed, but we saw a bunch of other cool things. Among them, the Cathedral of Florence, the 13th largest cathedral in the world. We also went to the oldest gelato shop in Florence, and it was delicious. More about gelatos will be mentioned in the next part. I love gelatos. <laughs> Any of, anyways, of course, we were in the center of the region of Italian leather, so there were plenty of purses and waltz all around. And we sang that night in Chiesa Filippo Neri. The next day was July 12th. This day was particularly interesting because we were not singing in a church or big building. Instead, we headed to the Cinque Terre, specifically Vernazza. Our performance that day was actually singing at a previous choir girl's wedding. What was incredible about it, besides the fact that we were at the Cinque Terre, is that we were actually singing on the side of a cliff looking out over the water for miles. It was incredible. The next day, we left our hotel and headed for Rome. We were staying in a hotel, we were staying in a hotel, uh, in a religious institute. Uh, again, we are not a religious group, it was just that at the religious institute, it was free to stay at. And we actually got to stay there, uh, because rather than being on a religious pilgrimage, uh, it was, it was about where we were singing in Rome. Well, where were we singing? Well, the next day we had a guided tour of the Colosseum and Roman Forum, then headed over to the Pantheon independently. But best of all, we had our concert in Chiesa Santa Maria della Scala Trastevere, which is basically one of the most famous churches in Rome. It's on nearly every top ten list for the most beautiful churches in Rome. It was amazing to sing in. My parents had actually traveled over the, for the last two performances, this one and the next one. 
so they were there. In addition, my grandparents, who actually live in Italy, came and saw this performance too. This concert was our last public concert, but what happened the next day was even better. The next day, we sang at, at Mass in St. Peter's Basilica. That's right, the largest cathedral in the entire world, the most holy place in the world, within the holiest country in the world, which also happens to be the smallest country in the world. It's 69,209 square feet. Th th this was incredible. We had the farewell dinner that night, and the next day the rest of the choir was leaving for home, but I was staying until the 27th. Um, I'm sure most of you know about St. Peter's Basilica, even if you're not Catholic. Um, again, our choir was not religious, but, I mean... Isn't that just incredible? Our choir had sang there 10 years ago. Not our choir, but the, the, the same choir, not with me in it or anything. And they had sang there. And so we, they, they had been so good that we got promoted this time to just behind the high altar. Now, before we end this part, I have two things. First, there are two pictures I took and one picture my mother took of numismatic shops we spotted. This one is literally right next to Juliet's house. The next one I saw on the way to Cinque Terre. I'm not sure where the one my mother took was. The second thing is some pictures I took of St. Peter's Basilica. Enjoy. This ends this part. In part two, I'll t talk about the time between the 16th and the 27th. I will also talk about gelatos, my grandparents, and much more. Make sure to look at all the links in the description, please. And th that ends this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.